Hello, welcome to another repair video. In this video, we're gonna be taking a look at this iPad 7th gen A2197 model number, and we're gonna replace this broken glass on there. Obviously, there's some damage around the home button there. It isn't currently affecting the home button, but we're gonna be sure to be careful around that area. Um, the first thing that we need to do is get it on the heat map for the next 10 minutes or so. There's eight minutes left on this one. We'll leave it on for eight and then we'll see how well we can get that display off. Once it's off, we're gonna replace it with one of these X07 brand extended warranty displays. These are really good. They come with Tessa tape pre-installed and they also have one of these more universal home button brackets, which is much, much easier to install than the other one and the fault rate when using them is much lower. So let's leave that on the heat map for 10 and then come back to it. So let's leave that on the heat map for 10 minutes and make a cup of tea whilst that's cooking. So now that it's had suitable cooking time, I'm gonna keep it on the heat mat here and starting up in this corner, I'm gonna get a razor blade between the glass and the frame. Then add a small drop of isopropyl alcohol and then with our trusted iFixit guitar pick, we're gonna start working our way around, just inserting it a small way and prying upwards so that the display sort of just, just comes away from the chassis. Try not to insert it too far because you will come into contact with the LCD. And if it falls out, just get your razor blade again and just pry it up very gently. Working our way along the top, the adhesive is a little bit thicker here. And then once you can get a finger, it just sort of hold it up whilst you work your way around it. This is hands down the hardest part part of doing a iPad repair. And I like to aim to not damage the glass any further. Although now I've said that comment, I guarantee we shatter the living daylights out of this one. Right, it's a little bit trickier down this bottom just because the display is more, more sort of smashed. Um, so I'm gonna sort of traverse along with the edge of my razor blade and just pry it upwards. until we've got a decent hold on it. And then same again around the home button. We really need to be careful not to insert it too far and just under the adhesive so we don't cut the home button flex, which runs from here along this sort of line there. If you are working on the heat map, bear in mind that it is hot and you might want some protection in the form of gloves. But once you've worked away enough, we can get rid of the heat mat. Add a drop of alcohol to this side here. And there's no need to pry down this side because it just opens up like that. And then there's four crosshead screws in each corner. The top two screws are hidden underneath this bit of tape. Or, so just peel back the tape allowing access with the screwdriver. 
Also, it's advisable to really avoid touching the LCD because it can be a bit of a pig to clean. Now the iPad's open, we need to pry up this LCD. And you might notice that there is some adhesive in these corners, so just get some tweezers and pry it out of the adhesive whilst the iPad's still hot. Otherwise it ain't coming out. You can see that the LCD is free now to, to lift up like that. With the LCD out of the way, we can disconnect the battery and insert our plastic pick into there to isolate the battery. Now there's three screws here that are holding down the connectors for the LCD and digitizer. Remove those and the shield and then disconnect the free flexors. There's one more flex for the home button just down here under this bit of tape. Peel the tape back, then lift up the little hinge and use some tweezers to pull that out. Then that little bit of rubber there is also holding down the flex. Is that now freed? can take the digitizer away. So now our digitizer is removed, I'm gonna start working on, on the frame. Removing all the excess glue that's left behind from the old adhesive. I'm just carefully scraping this off using this number 17 X-Acto blade making sure to remove all the excess adhesive. When it comes to this edge with the battery, we don't want to sort of slip and stab the battery. So I use these metal um, BGA stencils just to protect the battery as I'm working past it, because if I slipped, I'll only poke a hole in that. The Wi-Fi antennas are here and here, so same again, just be very, very careful. Not to cause any damage with the blade. If you, if you sort of push it down, it sits below the, um, the frame there, so you can get around it, even on that little thin bit. The glue can build up in the corners as well, so just be wary of that. So that is all the excess adhesive removed. And with that out of the way, I'm gonna use this little acetone bottle on a clean room wipe, and then just give it a real good scrub to make sure any excess adhesive will sort of melt away with that. Don't go, don't go crazy with the acetone because you don't need a lot, a little goes a long way but also be careful when you're rubbing these edges. Some of these edges can have burrs on them and they can be quite sharp. I've also just noticed a little bit of glass in there, so just remove any shards if it's really shattered. We're very nearly there with the preparation of this display. The last thing to do before we um, move on to preparing the new digitizer is applying some of this Tessa Adhesion Promoter. This is totally magic stuff. I apply it to all the edges with a cotton-free cotton bud. Um, and it's just gonna, it's a priming, it's a priming liquid. And 
helps the new tape to stick down. I've been using this a long time. I've previously used a 3M one and I find this one to be better. And I've had iPads come back after they've been broken, what we've repaired before. And it's like taking off an original display once we've done it like this. It's just as sort of, not difficult, but it, it just, I, I wouldn't be able to tell that it wasn't an original screen. So that's now prepared. We can put that to one side and prepare our digitizer. The first step for this is removing this old home button. Um, I'm gonna use heat gun set to 200 degrees to lift off this old button. And then get the blade under that bit. see a lot of the glass came came with it so I'm just gonna peel the button away from the bracket I'm gonna remove this bit of foam there and make sure that the, there's no glass on that part now I'm gonna try to get off the plastic gasket what's got the yeah there we go and between the plastic gasket and the rubber gasket there, I've just got that off. And the rubber, the rubber one's still intact, so we can still reuse that. That's perfectly fine to reuse. Now this home button's removed from the digitizer, we can get a new one and then add a bit of the adhesion promoter again to this area. Anywhere you stick in stuff, this will really help. Same on, on the back of this uh, flex cable. Same on the back of the flex cable here. I'll apply some of that and that sort of reactivates the adhesive as well. So I'll drop that into place like so. And then our flex cable goes on there. And that's stuck down. Next we can prepare a little bracket and I've already removed the, the factory adhesive from that because I'll stick my own adhesive on there to give me the confidence that it will stick for as long as I want it to, which is of course forever. And then a couple of very small little strips of Tessa adhesive, which is sort of the best double-sided ad adhesive that I have found. I'll link this in the description. Just peel back the tape. Drop that into place just there, like that. Right, I'm gonna peel this guy back, put that one there and then stick that back down, because that's how the original is. And then we should just peel off this bit of adhesive there. Now that we've got that foam there, we're just gonna make sure that there isn't some foam already around here and here, because that will impede the new digitizer sticking down. But we can see that when we, when we took the old screen off, it must have came away and I've just looked at the other side of my desk and it's actually there. The last thing to do to this home button area is apply some UV curing resin around the edge of that. So apply that around all the edges and this is just gonna give it an extra bit of easy to remove adhesive and just it's just as close as you can get to original isn't it so once you've applied that 
use a UV lamp and let that cure for a few minutes. And then after a few minutes, this digitizer is ready to install to our iPad. Next, we're gonna offer up these connectors to the relevant FPCs on the board. And this one's been a little bit of a swine. It doesn't want to sit in right. So just take your time to make sure that that goes in properly and they're fixed down as best that they will go. Once they're connected, peel back that tape again. And reconnect the home button. Push. Reconnect the home button. And push down the little zip connector, covering it back up with the tape. Peel back a little bit of rubber and drop it in place again on top of the flex. Next thing is to offer up the LCD connector, make sure that clips nicely into place. Then install the bracket and three screws. In this case, because it was slightly misaligned there, I just installed two of them loosely and then tighten them up once all three screws are in so there's no cross-threaded screws. Once that's secured down, we can remove our battery isolation pick and install that slightly longer screw into the battery connector. then place our LCD where it belongs. Install those four screws in, in the corner. And just as I was throwing away the old digitizer, I noticed that this little bracket for around the camera was still attached to it. So I just dropped that back into place there. It stops the camera wobbling around too much. Now all the screws are installed properly. We just want to test that the digitizer works good. So I'm going to boot up the iPad and make sure that the touch is good. Once it's booted up, just even if you don't have the passcode, you can have a good idea if touch is working by just dragging around the screen and the time should move around, time and date should move, but it shouldn't drop like that. So just have a good poke around, make sure that touch is all good all over. Make sure that home button works and feels OEM, that's really important. The home button should click nicely, it shouldn't be recessed into the, into the digitizer at all. It should click as if it did when the iPad was new. So before I stick this back down, the first thing that I will do is remove the adhesive, the double-sided stuff on the adhesive. Next, I will stand the iPad up like that. And I'm gonna make sure that this LCD is as clean as possible. You can wrap a clean room wipe around your finger and just go along it like that, in a single direction too. And that's gonna wipe all the dust away. And finally, peel back the plastic film on the screen 
I know this is out of shot a little bit, but you know what I'm talking about. And one last quick check for dust before dropping the screen into place on this bottom corner. Work your way through, but don't tighten it up here yet. When we get to this bit, I'm gonna peel off the adhesive. And the reason I do it like this is because when you're moving it around, it's quite easy for the flex cable that you can see there for the digitizer to stick to the, um, the adhesive. So, and we don't want that. But once that's peeled back, you can just close it up like that. And as far as I'm concerned, that is a perfect iPad 7 digitizer ripper. Thank you for watching. If you like this sort of thing, click the subscribe button, give it a thumbs up, and leave me a comment. Have a great day.